Hello and welcome to our intelligence systems presentation video. We are a team made up of three people, Bert, Blair and myself, Matt. Throughout this unit, we've been developing a traffic flow prediction system designed to not only be able to predict how busy an intersection is given a time and day, but also a route navigation system that allows drivers to transport from location A to B optimally. Such predictions begin with data processing. In order for a machine to understand patterns in traffic flow, it needs to be fed real historical data for it to learn from. This involves transforming SCAT's data source from VicRoads into a format that is usable by machines in terms of both testing data and training data. Due to the immense computational requirements of machine learning, which increases with data set size, the provided data set used is limited to a set of 41 SCAT sites in the Borondora area of Victoria. This meant we also needed to perform manual data processing to ensure the graph search is able to function properly. The provided source code for this project uses three machine learning techniques, GRU, LSTM, and SAYS. For our implementation, we looked to also implement RNN and our absolute time model. RNN is a recurrent network. It is able to hold memory, which optimizes it for predictions in a time series. GRU and LSTM are both advancements that aim to resolve the vanishing gradient problem of RNN. SAYS, on the other hand, is acyclic. Through a series of encoding and decoding layers, the machine is able to understand traffic flow patterns differently. Lastly, the time-based model takes an absolute time as an input instead of a time series. When understanding the source code, this presented our first challenge. How can we support the varying predictions for the 41 SCATS location since the provided code only supports one location? For this, we came up with two solutions. Adding the location as an input to the neural network, creating a separate model per location. Through comparing the results of the two methods, it was clear that using one model performed better. This is because one model can learn about traffic flow patterns from 330,000 records and attribute the variations to each location, instead of learning about traffic flow from only 8,000 records. Comparing the performance of the models under many different configurations, Guru observed the lowest loss being the most modern version of RNN, whilst the absolute time model observed the worst. This was to be expected as there was simply less data for it to make a prediction from. Using the data provided by VicBroads and predictions from our machine learning algorithms, we created a route prediction system. This route prediction system was used to determine the best five routes for a specified time when traveling in Burundura. To accomplish this, the ASTA algorithm was used. ASTA is a graph search algorithm, so we needed to convert the SCAT sites to a graph by representing each SCAT site as a node in a graph. Each node has a list of references to its neighboring nodes, as well as some other attributes like its name and its coordinates. The ASTA algorithm was selected for pathfinding due to its ability to determine the most optimal path. This algorithm has a list of possible nodes to expand, known as the frontier, and will select a node with the lowest cost to expand from this list, and repeat this until the destination node is selected. However, we needed to generate the five most optimal paths. So to make this alteration, a list was added to save the routes to. So after a route was found, it's added to this list. This is repeated until five routes are found. The cost of the routes was evaluated based on the amount of time taken to travel along a route. This was calculated using the formula time equals distance over speed with an added 30 seconds for each intersection traveled through. Each SCAT site has an associated longitude and latitude coordinate. So library GeoPy is used to calculate the distance between coordinates. To take into account traffic conditions, the speed the car travels is influenced by the predicted traffic flow. A model was created for the conversions between speed and flow. The equation and the corresponding graph for traffic model are shown. Some notable things are that the relationship between speed and flow are parabolic, so there are two speeds for every flow. So the equation was split into two. One equation for when the road is under capacity, and one for when the road is over capacity. The speed limit is also shown in the graph, to show the speed is capped at 60 km an hour. The values located at the turning point of the graph represent the flow at capacity, 1500 vehicles per hour, and the speed at capacity, 32 km an hour. These values were selected as they do a good job demonstrating the effect traffic has on the chosen routes. We also made the assumption that the road is always under capacity. We needed to make this assumption as the data did not provide enough information to determine if the road was above or below capacity. And the majority of the time, the road would be below capacity. Now is an example of a route that shows that traffic conditions affect the time calculated to travel a route, as the route with the shorter distance takes longer to travel due to the increased traffic on that route. For the GUI, it was important to develop a solution that could easily communicate with the route finding and machine learning layers. One option was to develop a web app with Flask to be able to call the navigation function from the web server. 
Ultimately, we chose to implement Tinker as the framework used to generate Windows in Python, as there is less overhead with developing a standalone application. For rendering the UI, we used Folium to generate the map and render GeoJSON data to the screen. Folium is a wrapper for the popular interactive map JavaScript library, Leaflet, allowing us to save the generated map to an HTML file. To effectively render the routes on screen, we took the scats route information, retrieved the geo coordinates from each point, and generated GeoJSON data, which provides a format for Folium to read from. So for the application, you've got the option to select the different model types, as well as enter a source scats site, as well as enter a destination scat site. You can also optionally enter a date and time in the following format, and then you can generate the routes. Once the routes generate, you are given five options, each with this total distance and the estimated time it will take to travel that route. You can then view these routes in a web browser to see the optimal path alongside any other routes that it has predicted from the starting point to the destination. You're also given the option to enter a single scat location and alongside the date and time, you can predict the current uh, traffic flow for that point. And you're given that value in terms of vehicles per hour. That takes you to the end of our presentation. Thanks for tuning in.